it looks like my koi really want to try this food out at the moment. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got a load of free giveaways to show you. With your mother with a rabbits. Right then, no more getting me wet. We're in a place a man has never been before. Pin it down with a man flu. Water test. They still are pretty damn close. So let's get back to the test room. I'm going to try not to bore you. It's something that needed to be said, to be fair. I've got a spider on me app. Since the start, I have not had my UV light on. That stuff there, actually what I'm trying to get at, when ammonia converts to... I think I've got one. So this is bicarbonate soda. It's so important that you know your exact pH. Also a safe level of ammonia. A few tips of what I do. It might, it may help you, it may not. The hows, the whats, the whens, and what I do myself personally. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. James the Koi Whisperer. And today, coming up in this video, as you can tell, I've been hit down with a man flu, but it don't stop me banging out another video for you guys. So to start with, I've just been packing away some of the old equipment that I had from my old pond, but the main purpose of this video is just to show you how I'm getting on with my pond, new pond syndrome, what I'm dealing with, how to deal with it. Like I said before, I'm just showing you what I do. The information may be of use to you, and it may not. There's some people that may agree with it, and there's some people that may not. There's facts and figures. Well, stick around for the video. See if you think doing things the right way, or if I'm not. Leave a message in the comments. So let's just crack right on into it. Right then. So we're in a place a man has never been before. Like I said in the past, I've got a bit of an OCD about keeping boxes, but it's very handy. If you, one, come to sell it, but two, for storage. So what I've done with all my old equipment, all boxed up, all rocking and rolling. Got the Epic... Got the Epic 2.0, load of filter mat, load of rubber boots, shower filter. There's enough equipment up here with all the pipe work which is in there to build a whole new pond. It's up here for now, for time being. Main reason is because I've got an idea. But yeah, moving on from that idea. So basically what I was going to do today, you can hear me voice, I'm a little bit croaky. Had a bit of the old man flu, you know what I mean? But it don't stop me when I've got things to sort out and make sure my koi are nice and healthy. Water test. I've got to be testing my water daily at the moment. Anyone with new pond syndrome, it's a thing that is a must. It's an absolute must. You cannot leave your fish and keep feeding your fish, even if they look happy. You can't just keep banging in food day in, day out, not knowing what your water's saying. So the first thing I'm going to do is get inside that filter house, right in there, and we're going to start doing some tests. One, two, three, four, five. But before we do those water tests, I've had a little parcel turn up and I've got a load of free giveaways to show you. Thank you, mother of the rabbits. Right then, so we've got a free giveaway in this video. 500 gram packs. I don't know if anyone's used it before, just to let you have a little bit of a look. It looks like my koi really want to try this food out at the moment. you got to do to be into a chance of winning one bag of that, one bag of that, and one bag of that. You've got to like the video for me. You ask yourself, how am I in for a chance of winning some of this new koi food? Like I said, I've never tried it myself before, but I'm keen to try it. There's three bags available. Anyone's available in the world to enter this competition, no matter where you are. What I'll do in two weeks' time, I'll leave the date on there when this video ends. In two weeks' time, thank you very much, Marmite. Just got the koi pond food wet. So in the next couple of videos, I'll let you guys know who is the winner on this competition. But all you've got to do to enter it, in the comment section below, just write down what my level of ammonia was in my pond. That's all you've got to write down. That there will be shown in a minute on my Hannah test kit. Thank you very much, Coin Pond Solutions. And what I'm going to do, if they send me a link with a discount code before this video goes out, I'm going to leave it in the description of the video as well. So then hopefully in the future, you guys can check them out. Or if a go, innit? Happy days. Right then. No more getting me wet. Whenever you start a new pond, you're going to go for a thing called new pond syndrome. There's a few ways of dealing with that. And I'm going to show you the way that I'm dealing with it. And I'll show you the most important things you need to keep your eye on for the first initial couple of weeks. Just until things start moving in your filter house. And especially to see if your filters are actually working and doing what they should be doing. Because there's a few things that you need to keep an eye on. One is your ammonia and two is your KH. I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. Just want to find out what's happening with my water in the pond. All of the fish, the water clarity looks perfect, but that doesn't mean that the water quality is perfect. So the only way that you can find that out is with a test kit. I've left the link down in the description. If you haven't got one, go and get one. But these are the Hannah test kits. There's also a safe level of ammonia in a pond when you're first starting out, depending what your pH is and depending what your KH is and the temperature of the water. 
So I'm going to leave a chart up on the screen in a minute, just so you can see what the safe levels are on the actual chart that is safe for ammonia to be in the pond. So yeah, with that chart, it is so important that you know your exact pH and you know the exact temperature of the water. And you can do that by using one of these. Right then, so you want to get yourself one of these Blue Lab Guardians, which gives you a total reading in your pH, it gives you a temperature of your water, and it gives you a total TDS in the water. You can always test out your pH using a cheaper kit as well. You don't need one of those electric probes, but the problem is with these, they're not quite as accurate as what the digital reading is. Either way, you need a test kit. No matter which test kit you use, you need something to examine your water to work out what's going on. Because looking at the water like I am now, all of the fish look completely happy. They don't look like there's a mark on them. They're not showing no signs of stress. But there's one thing for sure that I know that this water is not bang on. And the only reason why I know that is because I've been doing tests every single day this week. But just because you've got clear water does not mean that the water is healthy. So with levels of ammonia in the pond, there's certain levels of ammonia in the pond that can be handled depending on what the temperature is and what the pH is in the pond. Obviously, the lower the pH, the, the higher ammonia levels that a pond can handle when you're first starting up a pond. The higher the pH in a pond, the lower the ammonia levels a pond can handle in a pond. Eventually, if the ammonia levels stay toxic in the pond, it will kill every single one of your fish. But there's a way of combating that and the way, there's a way of helping to get your filters up and running on a brand new pond but I'm just going to run you through what I do and how I do things. Just need to show you how to work these test kits. Right then, so I'm going to try not to bore you because I know my videos ain't about this. I just think that it's very useful for people to know the information of, you know, what your water quality is saying and what test kits that you want to be using to work out what your water quality is actually like. Because like I was saying a minute ago, clear water in a pond does not mean that the water is healthy, not one bit. So since I've been using these HANA test kits, to be honest with you, I wouldn't change them for the world. I think they're the absolute dog's danglies. I was going to say another word then, but I won't be allowed to, would I? So yeah, they're so easy to use. You basically take your pond water straight out of your pond. You literally click one button. On that button, it says add C1. Well, C1 is just your pure water from your pond. Just line up where the two lines are on the back of that tube, sit it in place, hit the button. As Soon as it starts flashing, it says add C2. Open back up your little egg, whatever you want to call it. I call it me little egg. Two of your bottles included with this test kit. I would have said you get a number of tests out of your first one. If you buy a test kit like this, it comes with everything that you need to start with, but you do need to replace these over a period of time and like the KH1 you do need to replace that over a period of time. For testing for ammonia with one of these test kits all you do you just add four drops of the reagent A might have said that wrong but it's four drops give the other one a shake which is the B give that one a little swirl don't shake it just a swirl and add four drops of this four your lid on give it a swirl and I'm bound to have ammonia in the pond at the moment, and I want ammonia in the pond because without ammonia in the pond, the filters are never gonna get cycled. From there, what you do, you just hold the button down and then it starts counting down. So you leave that one there, we'll test that in a minute. What I'm gonna do is move straight on and test my KH because KH is also super important. Without, If I've got no KH in the pond, then I know I need to add bicarbonate soda to bring my KH levels up to help assist the ammonia which is being produced by the koi in the pond to help my beneficial bacteria in my filters to start off, to start off the cycle. It always starts with ammonia to start with. Nitrite is another thing you have to deal with, but that's not for the first couple of weeks because that is not being produced as of yet. So from there, what we do, we open up this one. It says add C1, line up those little lines at the back, close the lid, Press the button once. So after you've put it in there like that, it'll, you just got to wait a couple of seconds. As soon as it's ready and it's ready to go, it says add C2. This is testing for your KH. KH is just as quick to test with one of these test kits. The only thing that that won't do is tell you the exact KH 
show you how to do one of those tests in a minute as well what you put into the system to give you your results you just give it a swirl just to mix all of that in and this will give you exact reading of your kh and i just hold that one and then it starts counting down like that as well two minute counter whenever you start a new pond up it's always hard because looking at clear water you think oh the fish look happy there's certain levels of ammonia the fish can handle in a pond of, on temperature my pond temperature at the moment is 14 degrees the levels of ammonia that that can handle is about 1.2 parts per million anything more than that then my ammonia levels become toxic to the koi you get signs that the koi might go down to the bottom of the pond they might sit on the bottom of the pond ideally when you're first starting up a pond to get it started get your filter started as quick and as fast as you can when you're feeding a lot of you know i bought an auto feeder the other week well, the reason why i bought that is so i can monitor how much is going in i can monitor the exact amount of food and if i need to drop it back because the ammonia levels are too high a fish will produce ammonia without being fed on its own a fish will also produce bacteria that you need in your filters on its own so there's finding a balanced line of where you need to be to make sure you get the filters started as quick as you possibly can but without killing the fish at the same time because a lot of people will say if you've got high ammonia levels then do a 50 percent water change it might dilute it a fraction but it will still always be there you're better to keep it steady until it runs out basically keep a steady line and monitor it every single day until you get to where you need to be so on mine there that's telling me that i've got 39 is that how you work out your exact kh you need to divide that number by 17.9 whatever that number says now you need to divide it by 17.9 and that will give you your exact kh what i'll do i'll leave a little picture up on the screen of what that is now with the number figure Just to give you an example of kh a pond lab which has nothing wrong with this it works a treat what you do here you add one drop in like so that turns the water blue and then you count the drops until it turns yellow one drop two drops and we've turned yellow that test kit which gives you the exact kh and that one giving you a pretty close line to that you just don't get the decimal points but this one's finished and my ammonia in the pond at the moment is 1.22 parts per million which basically means at the moment when you look back at that chart of what i showed you a second ago that i'm at maximum level in my pond of the ammonia levels before it becomes toxic to the koi so now that tells me that i need to drop back my feed slightly in the pond because i don't want to go above that I want to keep it the exact same now for a course of a week or two weeks. I want to keep the fish interested and healthy. You keep your koi active, keep them looking for food, keep them interested so they don't get depressed. If you stop feeding completely, as soon as you get an ammonia spike and you stop feeding completely, that's the worst thing you can do because then the fish will be depressed and then it will take on more toxins and then the ammonia will kick right in and it will just... It will cause you more damage than what it will be by feeding very small amounts of food like what i have on my hand there which is probably only about one or two grams you're better off to do that than what you are not feeding at all because you need that ammonia in your pond you need that kh in your pond to kick start off your beneficial bacteria in your filters and there's so many different types of media that you can use which will help speed up your your, your process of keeping a pond running which is things like a plastic media will take twice as long as what a ceramic media will take before it creates enough bacteria to cater for the fish's ammonia that a fish produce every 24 hours without any of the food that goes in. You do a 20% water change of your pond once a week to help dilute the water, but every time you keep adding fresh water to the pond in big amounts, you just keep holding, you kick back what you've already done the week before so it just takes longer and longer hope that's enough said that's enough said for me anyway for a minute i've got loads more to tell you but it's boring people don't want to know not everybody wants to know anyway so let's move on from that and uh i know where we're at now with the levels and test your water twice a day see where you're at to make sure that your fish are healthy because when you get a problem generally too late and you think oh i've got parasites nine times out of ten it's not parasite related nine times out of ten it's water quality issues related, especially with a new pond. It's so, so important that you get your water quality right. 
and it takes a long period of time. For me now, before this pond's up and running, it's gonna take a long time before I'm comfortable enough to be putting in big amounts of food. There's a lot of people gonna be saying, why didn't I just take all of my media from my old pond and put it into the new pond, which I could have done, but then what was the point in that? Showing you guys along the way of how to set up a pond, how I set up a pond, and there's other ways of doing things, but this is the way I do it, and I just wanted to share with you. There's also a few other reasons why I didn't use that media in this pond. I'm not saying that the fish that I've transported across would have had no parasites on them whatsoever. I checked, I couldn't find any parasites on them, but in the media itself, where the biological media was too, like the moving bed, anywhere that you had media, you could, there's always gonna be parasites. You're always gonna have a parasite in a pond. A parasite like trichodina, for instance, a trichodina will not attack your fish if your fish is healthy. A trichodina will live in fish poo. It will live in a filter and it will cause your fish no trouble whatsoever. When trichodina becomes a problem, when it takes over, when there's you've got a brand new pond like I have and there's no poo in the pond, there's everything's clean. You've got clean media, clean filters, clean pumps, clean pipes, everything's clean. That's when a parasite will come in, take over and cause the fish major, major problems. I've got a spider on me app. He's been there for the last 10 minutes, but he don't affect me. I like spiders. So I'm just gonna set E3 there a minute and let's carry on with the video. Thank your mother for the rabbits. Well then, so I hope that bit of information was a little bit useful for you. I know it was a bit boring, but it's something that needed to be said to be fair, because a lot of people has been asking me the hows, the whats, the whens, and what I do myself personally. The amount of ammonia that is in the pond at the moment, when you convert that water in a minute from ammonia to nitrite, this one here I'm on about, basically what I'm trying to get at is when ammonia converts over to nitrite, it is a bit of a headbanger because it's confusing. I only know from experience of what I've learned over the course of keeping koi, and I know that when you've got ammonia in the pond, it's more toxic with a higher pH, so it's a constant battle of working out a steady line until you get to exactly where you need to be, until your filters are up and running. But that'll be in a whole nother episode when I get there because it will take a couple of weeks yet for the ammonia to kick in before it converts over through the nitrogen cycle. Moving on from all of that jibber to jabber, one thing I do recommend is good old Evolution Aqua Pure Start Gel. There's a few other brands that I like using as well, the NT Labs Filter Bugs, I'll leave a link down in the description of this video if you want to get your hands on some of it. It's just what I use myself personally and what I believe that really helps kickstart off your filters. Obviously that you need ammonia in your water before any of this stuff actually works and starts doing its business anyway. I find that it's best not to put it all in in the same night. I find you're better off to come out to your filter house every single morning and put a couple of drops in and then come out in the evening, put a couple of drops in and do that every single day for about three or four weeks. Keep it boosted up so you can keep everything exactly how it should be. You can also see there's a load of little pom bombs floating around. There's a link for them in there as well. And what you can see, for the people that put them in, let me see if I can grab one. Right then, I think I got one. So just catching one of these balls, the size difference of what they are, when they're actually needed in a filtration system, they do actually get used. I'll just come out here a minute into the better light. You can see how small that ball's got. And the reason why that ball's decided to get nice and small is because every single bit of that is being used. If you ever put them into your pond and they just stay the same size and they never ever dissolve or they never ever, ever, ever change size, then you don't need to use them. So unless you see them start dissolving, don't use them because there's no point using them if you don't need to. Definitely to start up a new pond is highly recommended. But the most important thing to keep an eye on is your pH. If you keep an eye on your pH, ideally I want to lower my pH. The reason why I want to lower that pH is because the ammonia levels at the moment are a close line of being toxic in my water. You can get hold of one of these through Finch Filtration or I've left one down in the link down in the description of this video where you can get it off of an Amazon link. Very highly recommend getting yourself one of these. They are pricey but they're worth its weight in gold. You can keep an eye on the temperature, you can keep an eye on the pH and you can keep an eye on the TDS. All of these bits of equipment what you see on my shelf as well, if you check down in the link in the description of the video, you'll be able to get your hands on. Because I've literally listed a load of links on Amazon just so 
you guys can see what I use and how I use it. One extra thing that I want to do, let's open this up a second. This is bicarbonate soda. This is, I just keep it in this tub because it just keeps it how it is. I buy this in bulk in like three or four kilo bags. This just helps keep the KH in my water. It just helps keep the KH there. I just let it go into a powder and just add it to my hands, mix it up. And just basically I'm just adding it in and that's ample. What I'll do later on tonight, I'll check my KH. Hopefully I'm about free and I stay at free. And we'll just see how things go for the, for the next 24 hours. And if I need to do any more KH, then I'll add some more. And if I don't, I won't. But that being said, happy days. Since the start, I have not had my UV light on. The main reason being any beneficial bacteria, like I was saying a minute ago, like that stuff there, any of that that you add will get killed off. But I just keep it off. Just to start off with, for the first week or two weeks or three weeks, just leave it off. It doesn't matter if your water goes green. Green water does not kill fish. Moving out here because it's a bit noisy in there, but like I was saying, green water does not kill fish. So you do not have to have your UV running. It's better not to have your UV running. Just helps out with your water quality. It helps out kickstart that biological system. Helps out beneficial bacteria harbor and grow against your filters. And obviously inside of my shower filters, that's where I want it to start harboring to start with. Obviously, you're dealing with water temperatures this time of year, but you can only do what you can do. Any of the links that you want are all down in the description of this video. All the items that I recommend, if you're interested in any there, that's why I put the links there, because I got constantly get asked, where do I get this from? Where do I get that from? So I just thought, right, easy just to make a whole page of it. That being said, look, check back next week. Check back, see what's going on, and I will see you on the next one.